Our brain is truly marvelous. Billions of neurons communicating each fraction of a second. The question is, how could it evolve? Welcome to Psyched. As we have seen previously, the earliest protobrains evolved to perceive touch and to move. This allows an animal to flee from an immediate threat and exploit resources of different environments. However, in species with such simple brains, movement is quite literally blind. To explore surroundings that are not in direct proximity, other senses, besides touch, are required. Examining non-proximal environments allows for directing movement and pinpointing resources. A crucial step to find or hunt down the next meal. Although certainly not the only way to face the challenges of survival, a myriad of species thrives by the virtue of having a keen sense of sight. For instance, Eagles possess marvelous distance vision. Cats can see clearly in low light conditions. And apes have excellent three-dimensional depth perception. But how could a sense of sight evolve? Despite the complexity of the eyes of many species, the humble beginnings of vision were much more mundane. First, cells in the outer layer of an organism evolved to be sensitive to light. It may seem astonishing that such epidermal cells would be sensitive to light. Yet, such light-sensitive traits can even be observed in single-cell organisms, such as bacteria. To them, light is crucial for survival, as it can be a means to absorb energy. But why light? Well, shorter waveforms, such as X-rays, they damage the cells. But longer waveforms, such as radio frequency waves, do not carry enough energy. Therefore, the wavelengths in the range of visible light are in the Goldilocks zone for certain single-celled organisms to obtain energy. This process of obtaining energy from light has become crucial in the cells of plants that conduct photosynthesis. However, Evolution of light-sensitive cells in animals has resulted in quite a different function. Together with the development of proteins, called opsins, light-sensitive cells, or photoreceptor cells, specialized into converting the light into an electrochemical signal. The signal travels into the brain where it can be interpreted. As we have seen in the first episode with the sense of touch, such an incoming signal can, via some intermediate steps, affect subsequent motor output and thus behavior. The same principle applies for incoming signals resulting from a sense of vision. Now, light-sensitive cells group together in an eye patch or an eye spot form the most basic form of an eye. Such simple eye patches, which can still be observed in modern species of leeches and worms, only know the difference between light and dark. Organizing light-sensitive cells in different ways to focus and amplify the incoming light is therefore crucial 
to get a more detailed picture. Now, this is the point in our evolutionary story where different eyes evolved at different stages. Eyes have evolved multiple times, from multi-lens compound eyes that can be found in insects, to camera type eyes that we find typically in mammals. Furthermore, even the eyes with the same blueprint, for example a camera type eye, can evolve in different ways. For example, some animals decorated themselves with vertical pupil slits to exploit the full range of light waves even in dim conditions. However, others prefer a style of horizontal pupils to have a broader field of view without the necessity to move the head. But let's come back to the eye patches and how those evolved into a more complex eye. For our story, we will focus on a camera eye-like blueprint, such as can be found in humans. Evolutionary pressure pushed light-sensitive cells to organize in shapes that absorb light more effectively. The earliest example is an eye cup, where a cup around the photoreceptor cells allows the lights from the frontal directions to come in, whereas light from other directions is blocked off. Such simple eye cups that can still be found in modern species of planarian flatworm, therefore give an indication where light comes from. Building on this idea of an eye cup, by making the opening smaller and smaller, we end up with a pupil. Adding some small muscles that can dynamically change the pupil size and you get an eye that adapts to light and dark environments by allowing less or more light in. More complexity, and thus more visual detail, is added by the evolution of a lens, which focuses light and allows for a more fine-grained picture and depth perception. Another step of complexity is added when different photoreceptor cells evolve that are sensitive to different wavelengths and thus encode different colors. With these building blocks, the eye becomes more and more sophisticated over evolutionary history. Consequently, the electrical signals produced by the receptors within the eye have become more complex as well. Containing various information about location, distance and color of incoming light. This means with the evolution of the eye, the brain had to adapt as well. Both individual neurons and entire visual brain regions have become specialized on specific information from the eyes. For example, the first visual cortex in mammals is typically retinotopically organized. This means that the center of the visual field is processed by different neurons than peripheral visual information. Furthermore, more neurons are dedicated to the center of the visual field, the fovea, allowing for more detail on the point where our eyes focus. Other visual areas have become specialized in recognizing color. Crucial, for example, in distinguishing ripe from unripe fruit. Again, other brain regions have become specialized in recognizing movement, which is paramount in hunting and in avoiding to become prey. How much each visual area has evolved 
and has become specialized in a species depends on the specific challenges and surroundings. For instance, visual areas in moles and other underground animals have largely disappeared as their eyes have become vestigial. However, eagles and other raptors have a large density of neurons related to the fovea, the center of the visual field, which gives them an excellent distance perception, much better than in humans. So, compared to an eagle, human vision doesn't seem very special. However, human brains have evolved so-called higher visual areas, including regions that are specialized in categorizing objects and recognizing faces. The latter trait being highly crucial for success in a social species like ourselves. So whereas the earliest brains evolved for perceiving simple touch and producing movement, gradually animals have evolved the ability to sense and extract information from surrounding light. Over millions of years, simple dark to light distinction has evolved into actual footage of our reality. As always, however, survival is a tough game and challenges await us everywhere. Challenges that vision alone cannot overcome. Therefore, in the next episode, we will look how animals evolved other senses and have become specialized in touching, smelling, and tasting the world around us. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we hope to see you the next time. Bye-bye.